This video is made possible by Vincero Watches, luxury handcrafted watches at fair prices. You can check them out through the link below or go to vincerowatches.com forward slash top tens. Animals have fired our imagination like nothing else. We love hearing facts about them and spreading them around, an activity that has become altogether more easy since the arrival of the internet. The problem is some of those so-called facts aren't really facts at all. They're myths, misconceptions, misunderstandings, whatever you want to call them. And since the animals themselves don't seem in a particular rush to correct us, maybe it's time that we sorted the facts from the fiction. Number 10. Bees always die after they sting you. Bees good, wasps bad. It's a view that many of us share. We convince ourselves that wasps are mean and vicious insects that like nothing better than to ruin our picnics and sting us on a whim. On the other hand, we consider bees to be friendly, hardworking members of society that make honey for our culinary pleasure and only ever sting us if we really annoy them because, well, they're gonna die if they do that, right? Well, it depends what bee decides to sting you. If we're talking about your average everyday honeybee, then it will probably die if you provoke it into stinging you. This is because they have barbs on their stingers that become lodged in an animal's skin, so trying to pull it free, the bee tears away not only its stinger, but also its venom sac and part of its digestive tract. In essence, the bee rips itself apart. Most other bees, bumblebees included, can quite happily sting more than once, however, because they have smooth stingers that don't get caught in an animal's sting. But even the honeybee rule isn't completely watertight. The queen honeybee also has a smooth stinger, so she can use it as much as her sadistic little mind wants. Number nine, Dolly was the first cloned mammal. When we think of cloning, we automatically think of Dolly the sheep, who achieved celebrity status in 1997. However, cloning had been going on for quite a while before her birth. Indeed, the first animal successfully cloned a tadpole occurred way back in 1952. Nor does Dolly have the distinction of being the first cloned mammal. In 1995, a year before Dolly was born, five sheep were cloned at the same institute, and two of them, Megan and Morag, even survived into adulthood. The difference between them and Dolly was that they were created using cultured cells that derived from a nine-day-old embryo, whereas Dolly originated from the cells of an adult animal. It was their creation that signified the technological breakthrough that made Dolly possible just a few months later, but unlike the cloned animals to follow, Megan and Morag sadly didn't make many headlines when they were born. Number eight, there are hundreds of poisonous snakes in the world. The mistake people make here is that they assume poisonous and venomous mean the same thing, but they don't. Venom is a toxin that is injected into an animal by means of a sting or a bite, whilst poison is ingested or inhaled. As such, a venomous snake and a poisonous snake are not one and the same thing. Whilst there are around 600 types of venomous snakes, there are only two species of poisonous a snake in the world, both of which are toxic to eat. The Japanese grass snake is one of them. It acquires its poison by eating toxic toads, storing the poison in glands in the snake's neck. This means that anything that decides to bite the snake's neck, a common place for a predator to strike, will get a mouthful of poison. The other species is a type of garter snake from Oregon which eats poisonous orange-bellied rough-skinned newts and once again sequesters the poison for its own use. Number seven, all frogs go ribbit. You can blame Hollywood for this one. Each species of frog has its own particular and unique call, so that means only one of them will go ribbit. The species in question is the Pacific tree frog, found commonly along the west coast of North America, including in Hollywood. It was recorded locally and plastered all over hundreds of movies for years, supposedly to enhance the atmosphere of wild and remote locations. Too bad the majority of those locales, ranging from the jungles of Vietnam to the Florida Everglades, simply aren't home to the ribbit frog. Other species of frogs, meanwhile, make a variety of different noises, such as barks, grunts, trills, clucks, whistles, and even growls. Number six, earwigs crawl into your ear and burrow into your brain. Don't lose any sleep over this one. Earwigs don't crawl into people's ears any more than other insects do, which, for those who are suddenly worried about that, is not very often at all. They also certainly don't burrow into your brain. But if that's the case, how did earwigs get their name? One theory is that the pincers on the rear end of the insect, called Circe, resembled the tools used for piercing ears. Another is that the insect's original name was earwing, in reference to the ear-like shape of the hind wings, but no one knows for sure. No matter the origin, though, many people through the centuries have believed the old wives' tale about earwigs having an unusual attraction towards human ears. One person who certainly thought it was true was the famous Greek philosopher Pliny the Elder, who decided that the recommended way of removing one from your ear was to spit into the opposite one until the earwig was forced out. 
Now, just before we get into the top five today, I do want to take a quick moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Vincero Watches. Vincero create exceptionally crafted timepieces, and they do it at fair prices. These watches, they're great looking pieces. They're not minimalistic like a lot of online watches that you can get these days. Rather, they're bold, they have a distinctive look. This one that I'm wearing right now, this is their Altitude watch. It's Vincero's take on a pilot watch. This is the Rogue. This is what I got before the, uh, the Altitude. Great looking thing as well. And then this is the one I was originally sent, which is the Vincero Chrono. This one is a silver and blue combination. They're all great looking. Uh, this is black, black and blue. Great looking things. I rather like the altitude, nice nylon strap, red second hand, pretty typical of a pilot watch, which is uh, super nice to look at. Also built for adventure, sapphire coated mineral crystal glass, stainless steel case. So, uh, you know, it can take a few bumps. They've got men's and women's watches, so if you buy for yourself or buying as a gift, it's a great option. You can also have it engraved on the back. Uh, I don't actually have it engraved, but you can absolutely do that if you want. And uh, yeah, there'll be a link to Vincero below, or just go to vincerowatches.com forward slash top tens to check them out. And let's get into the top five. Number five, you are never more than six feet from a rat. There are two main reasons to dislike a rat. One is that they are a huge ecological pest driving defenseless and native animal species to extinction, particularly flightless birds. But that probably isn't keeping you up at night. The second reason, and the one that just might cause a lot more worry, is that rats are filthy, disease-ridden animals living just beneath our feet. Well, as it happens, they probably aren't. The National Rodent Survey estimates that we are usually at least 70 feet away from our nearest rats, and possibly up to 164 feet. They are surprisingly clean animals, and while it isn't recommended that you find a wild rat and put it in your mouth, they carry no more diseases than any other wild mammal. And by the way, the brown rat never even carried the bubonic plague. The culprit was its cousin, the black rat, which has now paid for its admittedly unknowing role in the spread of the disease. It is today extremely rare in the British Isles, with only a few scattered populations on remote islands or in major cities. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the black rat has failed to make an appearance on any endangered lists. Grudges, it seems die hard. Number four, the buffalo was nearly hunted to extinction in North America. The buffalo couldn't have been nearly hunted to extinction in North America because it has never lived in North America. The animal in question is the American bison, which is only distantly related to the buffalo. You'd have to travel all the way to Africa or Asia to see a real buffalo. So where does the confusion stem from? The word buffalo is of Portuguese origin, stemming from the Latin bubalus, or wild ox, and was applied to the water buffalo of Asia, which was introduced to the Mediterranean over a thousand years ago. It was largely wrongly applied to the bison when Europeans first traveled to North America. The word bison, which was only used much later in 1774, also means wild ox in Latin. And if you're still unconvinced, the animal's scientific name, Bison Bison, should leave you with no doubt. Number three, cow farts release a ton of methane gas. Ah, the cow. If there's one animal that can rival a car in releasing unpleasant pollutants into the atmosphere, it's this one. But the methane isn't primarily coming from overly flatulent individuals. In fact, 95% of it is coming from burps. That's right, we've been blaming the wrong end for years. The methane expelled from a cow in this way is responsible for a third of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions and 4% of the emissions worldwide. In fact, livestock farming creates a staggering 18% of these greenhouse gases, which is far more than all the cars and other forms of transport on the planet. Work is currently underway to make a methane-reducing pill called a bolus, which will dissolve inside of a cow over several months. Number two, cockroaches would be the main survivors following a nuclear war. Cockroaches are tough animals, make no mistake about it. They can remain submerged in water for about a day and can live without their heads for a week. But they would actually be one of the first insects to die in a nuclear fallout. Humans die at an exposure of around a thousand rads. Cockroaches, which only die at 20,000 rads, seem like mighty survivors, but this is nothing compared to some other insects, particularly certain species of parasitic water. Wasp. Some of these wasps can withstand a staggering 180,000 rats. Number one, Brontosaurus was a huge long-necked dinosaur. As a rule, dinosaurs have long, complicated, hard to pronounce names. As children, we learn a few of them, Tyrannosaurus, Stegosaurus, Brontosaurus, etc. And well, they remain with us throughout our lives. They are the high-profile dinosaurs, the famous extinct creatures we are most likely to encounter in films and other media. 
Well, we've got terrible news. Never mind being extinct, the Brontosaurus never existed in the first place. It all started during the Dinosaur Wars of the late 19th century, when fossil hunters competed across North America to be the first to find and name new dinosaurs. It was a frantic race, and so it's not too surprising that a few things slipped through the net. In 1877, Othniel Charles Marsh discovered a long-necked sauropod dinosaur, which he named Apatosaurus. It was missing a head, but that was fine. He just placed the head of a similar dinosaur on top to complete it. Two Two years later, Marsh discovered the skeleton of what he perceived to be another long-necked dinosaur, this time more complete, and he named it Brontosaurus, or Thunder Lizard. Perhaps in his eagerness to name the dinosaur before someone else got credit, Marsh didn't realize that Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus were, in fact, one and the same. Even as early as 1903, scientists discovered the mistake. Since Apatosaurus came first, that is the animal's official name. Brontosaurus is now scientifically obsolete, yet, ironically, it's the name that is better known to the public. Perhaps that's because it was the first ever mounted display of a sauropod skeleton, or maybe it's just because it's a better name. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day of the week. Check out our fantastic sponsor Vincero through the link below. And thank you for watching.